morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on the first Sunday after Christmas. Uh, next Sunday is the baptism of the Lord. Please rise. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at the 10th verse. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As the bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adores herself with her, with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shall shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be be a crown of beauty in the land of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of the, your God. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all the angels. Sing praise to all the hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded, and they were created. Give this man to pass forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. 
Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants. The children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Galatians chapter 4, beginning with the fourth, fourth verse. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's time for the children's message. How are you doing? Are you all tired out from all the celebrations? Well, there's one more to go. Hey, New Year's. <coughs> and today, <coughs> excuse me, I have a frog today. Today we're going to do one more celebration, and it is celebrate being a child of God. This bag says, I'm a child of God, and there's something for you in a little while. But the first thing I need to do this morning is to get everybody's name. Well, there we have Elodie and Edie. Good. Thanks for coming up, girls. Let's see. I already have uh, Jackson and Cece. Did you come up? Did they come up? Maybe not. <laughs> okay, Soren is here. Hey. Did Soren come up? <gasps> there he is. Okay, good. And Andrew and Ellery and Nathan are here. And Danny. Did Danny come up? There she is. Alex came up too. Did David come up? Not today. Okay. Now, who did I miss? I have Elodie and Edie. I have them on my right. Who else do I miss? Okay, I know. I have them right here. Carter and Charlie and Vera, right? Vera's not here. Okay. Carter and Charlie. Okay. And um, Natalie? Natalie's here. Okay, this is for something we're going to do in a little while. We can't celebrate if we don't know your name. Any other names? Mr. Fuji. Anthony. Do I have you down? Oh, there you are up there. Anthony and Claire, hey? I tried to write down all the kids that I thought might come up, but I wasn't sure. Now, is there anybody else? I think that's everybody, hey? Okay, good. Today we're going to talk about, like I said, being a child of God. <coughs> And I'm going to reread what Miss Donna just read from the book of Galatians. Galatians is in the New Testament. It's a letter that Paul wrote to the young church in, um, what, where was it? In Galatia? <laughs> in Galatia. Okay, that's why they're called Galatians. So here we go. This is from the International Children's Bible. But when the right time came, God sent his son. His son was born of a woman and lived under the law. God did this so that he could buy freedom for those who were under the law. His purpose was to adopt us as children, as his children. And you are God's children. That is why God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit cries out, Father, dear Father. So now you are not a slave. You are God's child. And God will give you what he promised because you are his child. So that's what we're going to celebrate today in between Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> the other day I read a true story about a little boy who was adopted when he was only three days old by a family who wanted and needed him to join their family. His mother, who loved him and gave birth to him, was unable to care for him, so she wanted to make sure he was with people who would also love him and give him a good home. 
His new family, with a mommy and a daddy and a sister, loved him very much. On the day he came home from the hospital, his new mommy and daddy invited all of their family members and friends to a party. And they all uh, celebrated his birth and adoption. They even baked a birthday cake. They felt so blessed to have this new baby boy as a part of their family. And he grew up to be a fine young man. Can you imagine being adopted by God? That's what we are. The Bible lesson I read earlier tells us this. But when the right time came, God sent his son, that's Jesus. His purpose was to adopt us as children. The Bible teaches us that because of God's great love, which is shown by us to us by Jesus, we are adopted into God's family. We are chosen by God to receive his love and become his children. This is a great reason to celebrate. How wonderful to know we are loved and cherished by God, even more than an adopted child is loved and cherished by his new parents. So uh, people can't love as much as God does and the way God does. So God loves us even more than our parents. We should rejoice each day and maybe even have a party to celebrate our adoption into God's family. So we're going to sing in a little while, but um, sometimes at a party, a New Year's party or a birthday party, you have yeah. noisemakers. <laughs> So this might be dangerous, but I want you all to not look in the bag and take something out. Okay, take one thing out. Don't look in, but take one thing out. Oops. <laughs> Will you pass it around? You'll do that, hey? Thank you. Take one thing out and don't make any noise until I say, make some noise. That's going to be our, our sign, make some noise. In a little while, we'll try them to make sure they work. Everybody take one. We've got noisemakers for our celebration. There you go. Pass it to your brother. Soren needs one. And Natalie behind you. Yeah, there's like three different kinds in there, so you don't know what you're going to get. We'll call them our child of God noisemakers. We'll, we'll get Natalie. Okay, a few more. Good job. And of course, we're going to sing at this celebration, so we'll get ready to sing. You got one, Andrew? Okay, good. Everybody has one. Should we try them out? Okay, here I say, make some noise. Okay. <laughs> here. Maybe you have to. Maybe you have to hum into it. <laughs> Oh, okay, we'll stop now. And now every time I say make some noise, that's when you'll do it. You want to you wanna put yours in here and we'll trade for another one? Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, I have a, a song I made up to the tune of Mary Had a Little Lamb. And we're going to sing it with each of your notes, only it's not going to be Mary Had a Little Lamb. It's Our God Has a Precious Child. And we'll practice with, uh, let's start with Soren. You ready, Soren? In a little while, you're going to make some noise, everybody, but not till I finish the verse. Our God has a special, a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and his name is Soren. Make some noise for Soren. Okay. Just, just one quick one. <laughs> okay, here we go with the next one. Sing with me if you once you get the words. We'll do Andrew. Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and his name is Andrew. Make some noise for Andrew. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and her name is Ellery. Make some noise for Ellery. <laughs> okay, we're going to finish this family. Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and his name is Nathan. Make some noise for Nathan. <laughs> okay, this is a fun party. Let's go back to um, Soren's family. Let's do Elodie. Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and her name is Elodie. Make some noise for Elodie. <laughs> okay. Our 
Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and her name is Evie. Make some noise for Evie. Ah! You are really good at that. Edie and Elodie are twins, by the way, and they're not very old at all, but they came up today, so that's nice. Okay, let's see, where did I leave off? Let's do Danny. Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and her name is Danny. Give some noise. Ah! <laughs> okay, now let's have a new rule. You can't make noise unless you sing. <laughs> Here we go. Let's do Alex. Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and her name is Alex. Make some noise for Alex. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next family. Carter, we'll start it. Our God has a special, precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and his name is Carter. Make some noise. <laughs> okay, Charlie is his brother. Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and his name is Charlie. <laughs> Good job, everybody. And your sister is Natalie, hey? No. Natalie is oh, way over there. That's Natalie. Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and her name is Natalie. Make some noise. Good. <laughs> and then we have Anthony and Claire, and I think we'll be done. Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and his name is Anthony. <laughs> One more. Claire, Anthony's sister, hey? Our God has a precious child, precious child, precious child. Our God has a precious child, and her name is Claire. Make some noise. <laughs> oh, okay, now I have a question for you. Do you need to be a kid to be a child of God? No. Um, how, how about young Miss Donna over here in the Acolytes? Are they children of God? Yes. yes. And how about young Pastor Nicholas? Is he a child of God? Yes. yes. And you know what? Oh, I just had a birthday. I'm getting older. I'm older than them, that's for sure. Am I a child of God? Yes. 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 And la Pardon me? You knew that, hey? Yeah. All right. Um, the Many people listen to us on... Uh, over the radio, and they watch the YouTube channel and listen to the YouTube channel. And one of the ladies is going to be 99 this month. So even if you're 99, you're a child of God, aren't you? Okay. So I think we should sing to our 99-year-old that listens every Sunday on YouTube and watches us. Her name is Betty. Betty Senatori. Let's sing the song one last time to Betty. Okay. Our God has a special child, special child, special child. Our God has a special child, and her name is Betty. Make some noise for Betty. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Now I have a prayer, so don't make noise during the prayer. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for adopting us. So we can be your children forever and ever. Amen. Okay, you can't leave until you promise that you're going to give that noisemaker to a grown-up when you get back to the pew. Okay, good. Okay, we'll see you next time. Oh, there's something else here for you. Just a little, um, I'm a child of God sign to put on your desk or by your bed or on your table, anywhere at all. I'm a child of God. Do you want to take two for your sister, Soren? Take two for your sisters?
Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismiss dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, The child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When the fullness of time had come, St. Paul writes in Galatians, God sent his son born of a woman born under the law. The almighty eternal son of God, who is above all things, even the law, becomes a man so that he'd be placed under the law like you and me. Now, the law is not only about morality and about proper worship of God. The law always comes into an atmosphere where there is already sin. In the same letter to the Galatians, Paul tells us this is why the law was given in the first place. Chapter 3, verse 19, the law was added because of sin. And so the law not only tells us what we should and shouldn't do, it not only tells us how to avoid sin and fulfill righteousness, but it also has a means for dealing with sin, a means for making amends of sort, and that is called sacrifice. And here, at this point in Jesus' life, the law demands the sacrifice of turtle doves or pigeons as he, the firstborn male, is dedicated at the temple. Eventually, Christ will fulfill the law once and for all by sacrificing his very self, his own life on the cross. Of course, Christ's sacrifice will also be the beginning of something new. He does not fit into the law's system of sacrifice. The book of Hebrews tells us that the sacrifices of the law must be offered over and over again. But Christ's sacrifice is once and for all and forever. Christ will not be sacrificed in the temple like the pigeons or turtle doves, but instead at Golgotha, the garbage dump. He will not be sacrificed at the hands of the proper priests, the Levites, but instead by Gentile soldiers. And here we see that even as Christ is born under the law, God is already beginning to do something new, to give freedom to us who live under the curse of the law, to give us adoption as children of God. Simeon was a righteous and devout man. 
No doubt he did all that the law ordered him to do. But he was still, as the Bible says, looking forward to Israel's consolation. The temple and the law had long since been there, but Israel's consolation was yet to come. The Holy Spirit rested on Simeon. The Spirit told Simeon that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah with his own eyes. This is what the Holy Spirit always does. He preaches Jesus Christ and him alone. When Simeon sees the Christ child, he says that now the Lord is dismissing him in peace. Now the promise has come true. Now he has seen salvation in the Messiah, the Christ child. The Spirit does not point him to the law, not to spirituality or to religion, but to, but to this child, Christ the Lord. This time he does not come to the temple to sacrifice or worship, but to proclaim Christ. Anna practically lives at the temple. She worships night and day. She knows that the temple plays an important role in God's law. She fasts all the time, but she knows when she sees the Christ child, she is seeing something new. Christ is not a building, not a sacrificial system, not a fast, but he is God's consolation for Israel. He is comfort, salvation. He is a light to the Gentiles who have no law or temple and the glory of Israel, more glorious than even Israel's glorious temple. The law does not leave much for women to do in relation to God. It is the firstborn son who must be dedicated. The sacrifices must be offered by male priests. But here comes Christ into the temple disorganizing everything. Because of him, many rise and fall. Everything gets mixed up. And so here we have Anna, this woman, who is a prophet, preaching the gospel publicly at the temple, quote, to all who were waiting for Jerusalem's redemption. Anna tells Mary and Joseph and all the people that this child is the redemption of Israel. Not the law, not the temple, not our works, but Jesus Christ he alone is all people's redemption. Now Simeon explains to Mary that Jesus is coming to bring a sword that will pierce the soul. And Christ himself will say this once he starts his ministry 30 years later. Simeon tells Mary that Jesus will be opposed. He will cause many to rise and many to fall. Why? Why would the Messiah... Why would God's salvation cause controversy in Israel among God's own chosen people? Shouldn't everyone, every Jew, be just as happy about Christ as Simeon and Anna are? Well, Christ creates trouble precisely because he is new and he is not the law. Simeon and Anna understand that the law plays a very important role in this life but they understand that salvation comes by God's free gift alone. They understand that the only way to deal with a God who gives free gifts is to believe his promises, to have faith precisely in this child. And so they preach the good news of this child that their words create faith because they understand that this child has fulfilled all of God's promises to them and all of Israel. The law was guardian over the people until God sent his promised Messiah, his salvation. Simeon and Anna, you see, understand the difference between God's law on the one hand and the gospel of Jesus Christ on the other. But many do not. They think the law was not given to restrain their sin and point out their need for a Messiah. Instead, they believe the law was given so that by doing its works, they might make themselves righteous. And here comes Christ revealing the inner thoughts of their hearts, as Simeon promised. They put their faith in the law and their own works, their own choices, rather than in God's free gift, the Christ child. And so he does cause many to fall. And Christ often spent his time with those who were obviously failing, failing according to the law. The sick, the dead, sinners, 
even at times, tax collectors and prostitutes. Christ spent time with children who did not yet know the law, who didn't know when to make sacrifices. And so many rose from lowliness to new life in Christ. The first became last, and the last became first. After Jesus had died and was risen and sent his apostles out to proclaim the good news to the Gentiles, St. Paul described the situation like this in Romans 9 and 10. What then are we to say? Gentiles who did not strive for righteousness have attained it, that is, righteousness through faith. But Israel, who did strive for the righteousness that is based on the law, did not succeed in fulfilling that law. Why not? Because they did not strive for it on the basis of faith, but as if it were based on works. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they have not submitted to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. God's righteousness is the righteousness of faith. Faith is pure passivity, like Mary in the story of Mary and Martha. Faith is not doing work, but instead being grasped by Christ and his righteousness, being redeemed. But where there is faith that Christ is the Savior, the faith of Anna and Simeon, where the gospel is preached as they preached it, there we have no righteousness of our own, but we have all of Christ's righteousness. There we are baptized into God's own righteousness in Christ, and here there is freedom. As Paul says in Romans 10:4, once again, Christ is the end of the law, so that there might be righteousness for everyone who believes. Good works actually come after the law has ended. Faith alone in Christ alone is true righteousness, and works come pouring out of this faith. They do not make us righteous. Good works are done by people who are already righteous in faith. You see, for a good work to be truly good, it must be done without fear of punishment or hope for reward. A truly good work can only be done when the law and all of its threats and promises of reward have come to an end in faith itself. Works serve our neighbors, but God has no use of them. He wants us to look to his son alone for our comfort and redemption. He wants us to be like Simeon and Anna, and he wants us to believe what they say about this child. So now, now that he has seen the Christ child as the Holy Spirit promised him, now Simeon says he is being dismissed in peace. He is free to die. This is the dismissal that Simeon refers to, being dismissed from life in this world. The Holy Spirit's promise to Simeon would that, was that he would not leave this world until he had seen the Messiah before with his own eyes. Now the promise is fulfilled. He has seen the Messiah, so now he can die. To paraphrase Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Jesus Christ is permission to die. No longer must we protect our own lives. No longer do we have to earn our own righteousness, our own goodness, because we have all of Christ's, and that is more than enough. Now life is a free gift of the Lord God. This child is our redemption and salvation. In a world filled with sin and death, Christ is a light to the Gentiles and the glory of Israel. We have been baptized into Christ's death, so now we can die. We can give up. We can give up on establishing our own righteousness because we have received Christ's. Now our righteousness is the passivity of faith. Faith is being just as passive before God as the dead are. The dead can have faith. Just because you stop breathing does not mean your faith is gone, so death cannot hurt us. It just sets the stage for resurrection precisely as it did for old Simeon and old Anna. If God does give us more time on earth, even our good works now become a part of this permission to die. Like old Anna and Simeon, we are all in the process of being dismissed from this life. So now we are free to present our bodies as living sacrifices, as Paul says. We are free to die 
free to become sacrifices for one another. We are free not because we have seen Christ like Simeon, but because our ears have received Christ's word of salvation. We have heard from the Messiah himself. And after our dismissal from this life is complete, we will see him with our eyes as Anna and Simeon did before us. Romans 6, 7. For whoever has died is free from sin. Colossians 3, 3. You have died and your life is hidden in Christ. This is most certainly true. Please rise. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for one another. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for your holy church, gathered and nurtured by your word and sent into the world to be the body of Christ. Give us always the mind of Christ that we may seek the lost, bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. Empower us with purity in teaching, holiness in living, and Christ-likeness in serving. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all to whom we entrust authority to govern. Help them to serve according to your will so that mercy and truth, justice and peace may prevail. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who suffer sickness, sorrow, and adversity. Make bold all who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Keep safe those who endanger their lives, protecting others. Refresh those who bear heavy burdens. And use us as messengers of your mercy and instruments of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, be merciful to all, and when we reach our final hour, Grant us a blessed departure from this world and on the last day a resurrection into your glory. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, gave thanks, and gave it to them and said, Take and drink it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray together. O oh God, in communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
to love and serve the Lord. 